I discovered a little problem with the old heliocentric model of the retrograde motion on the planets. Of course, if you watch my previous videos, you would realize that uh, I've been telling you that they try to convince you that the retrograde motion of the planets is only an apparent retrograde caused by perspective, caused by what they tell you is that you're on a spinning globe. This little animation, this crude little horsey animation that uh, they have on YouTube here, kind of depicts what they're talking about. Let's play a little bit of it. Okay, this little blue dot is their Earth, the yellow dot is their Sun, and the red dot is their Mars. I say Mars, uh, we're going to do, we're going to have Mars as a case example here. It says Mars only occurs, retrograde Mars only occurs about once every two years. And so, as the Earth travels around the Sun, the apparent position of it against the stars is changing. <laughs> In any given time interval, the Earth will move farther in its orbit than the planet. Um, path of the planet. Okay, now this is what they would call opposition. And then the planet reverses the other way appears to reverse, and they think it only appears to reverse the other way, of course. And then it goes on like that. And if you watched my Orbit of the Planet video, video that I made over about a year and a half ago, here it is, within the concave Earth, um, what I have is a series of paths going around the inside of the Earth, and where I represent one frame equaling one day, so I have the actual motion of the planets going clockwise. In reality, they would go counterclockwise, but I'm just doing a set time interval each day, so it's giving you this path here. And this path right here, that's Mars. So you saw the red, that's where the retrograde occurs. And I told you before that uh, it's happening because the sun is affecting the planets magnetically or with temperature or both. And as the sun moves further away from Mars, the sun is down here. Mars begins to fall into retrograde because it loses the magnetic influence that the Sun has on it and begins to get confused and start going the other way like that. See how it's going the other way now as the Sun's over here in opposition. And then as the Sun turns around back, it begins to influence Mars again. Initially it'll push it and it'll catch up to it as Mars goes behind the Sun. I say that the Sun, the back side of the Sun is dark and there's no heat emanating in the back of the sun, so it's not really affecting it too much when Mars goes behind the sun like that. And one of the real good telltale signs that cannot possibly be happening in a heliocentric mo model with only perspective or appearance giving the retrograde is if you just go into Solarium. Now I'm considering that these, this data here is accurate. And what you want to look at, and they won't want to tell you, this is why they can't, they can't give you an accurate model of the heliocentric retrograde motions, is because it doesn't make sense. The apparent diameter, okay, the apparent diameter, the angular diameter of every planet is measured in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Uh, this coming year, actually, it's coming up real soon here, we're going to have a retrograde of Mars. Starting, I believe, uh, April, mid-April, and ending in uh, toward the end of June, but it has its opposition in May 22nd, and a telltale sign that you can understand that it's not because it's just an apparent perspective of retrograde, it is because of the apparent di diameter of Mars, or any planet going into retrograde now. You will notice, if I just like fast-forward the time here, Let's see, we're starting here. I don't know if you can read my date here. Let's move this up a little so you can read the date. Here we go. Okay. All right. We have a date here of June 6th, 2016. But let's reverse it. Let's go back a little bit. Well, it's not showing my telemetry. I'm going to go back to approximately... May 20th or so. And then, of course, let's 
get Mars centered on the screen. There we go. There's our Marsy Mars. All right. Apparent diameter of Mars on May 20th, 2016 is 18.3 arc seconds. And that's pretty big. Normally, it, it Mars will fluctuate very, very much. I mean, when it's not in retrograde, and it's just in like when it's in like normal orbit, it'll, the apparent diameter will shrink down to like three, three point seven arc seconds. And so when it goes into retrograde, it gets really, it appears really big in the sky. That's why we call it the apparent diameter. And what you want to notice here is I'm going to fast forward the, the dates here, starting around May twentieth. I'm going to go fast speed here. And watch the apparent diameter. Okay, now it's, it's going about, okay, this is here, 1,300 hours, 1,400 hours. I'm going to go a little bit faster. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So 521, May 21st, apparent diameter, 18.3, 18.4. We're at May 21st, it's at 18.4. May 22nd is 18.4. May 23rd is 18.4. May 24th. Oh, it increased a little bit to 18.5. May 25th, it's still staying at 18.5 arc seconds. Now it went up to 18.6, we're at May 26th. Now it's going to stay at 18.6 arc seconds. The apparent diameter is not going to change for a good oh, six to eight days or something like that. And that's the reason right there that your apparent retrograde motion on a heliocentric universe does not compute. As you see, it's we're at uh, May 30th, and it's still 18.6. A little bit further here. And I'll show you that in a minute after we do this little time acceleration exercise here. And we're at June 1st. It's still 18.6. The apparent size has not changed. Hmm. wonder why. May 2nd, uh, June 2nd, still at 18.6. June 3rd, still at 18.6. June 4th, still at 18.6. Okay, now it starts shrinking. June, and eh, middle of the day, June 4th. June 5th, 18.5. June 6th, 18.5. June 7th, 18.4. See, now it's starting to rapidly decrease. It, it tapered off, it plateaued off for about eight days at 18.6 during the peak of the retrograde. See, now it's going to 18.3. We're at June 9th. And it's actually going to accelerate in angular apparent diameter. It's going to shrink rather quickly. It's going to be into a shrink quicker now. 18.2 or June 11th. So you get the idea, right? Let's speed it up a little bit more. We'll see June 13, June 14, we're at 17.9. June, June 18, we're at 17.6, 17.5. So it rapidly accelerated in shrinkage. It shrunk rather quickly after the retrograde. Actually, it was, we're still in June, I think June 30th was the end of the retrograde. So, so what I'm trying to tell you here, let's stop that and let's go. Back to their rinky-dink little 
animation thingy. During the retrograde, during the opposition, or during the change in direction, you'll notice that the distance is not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> There's a disparity in distance between Earth and Mars in their model. You know what I'm saying? Take it into Photoshop here. Just add my little layers here. You'd have to create, okay, this is where it's at opposition. If Mars was over here and Earth was over here, the path of Mars or the path of Earth would either have to alter in a really weird way in order for that to actually work. Because these green lines are the exact same length. So that's what you would be seeing. That's what the orbit, it wouldn't be an ellipse, it would be a funky donkey, curvy worry type of orbit. <laughs> it doesn't work like that, people. And no, it's not because there's any gravitational pull toward each planet. That's not why it's, it just doesn't work. You understand? It just doesn't work. So going back to my uh, orbit of the planets video, where I have, I'll just take Mars as a case example. You have Mars going right over here. And once it slips into retrograde, it's almost as if it hits a barrier. And like I told you before within the copy, I believe there are concentric, transparent glass barriers, like an onion. A tabernacle for the sun, a tabernacle for the planets, a tabernacle for the moon. That's why we see chromatic aberration when we're looking through telescopes that are supposedly not supposed to allow chromatic aberration <laughs> when we're looking at planets. That's because it's hitting a barrier here, Mars. It's not hitting the actual glass barrier. It's coming close to it because we can actually see Mars, you know, one of the Mars' moons, go in front of it. But it seems to be there's some kind of compression effect or some kind of repulsion effect that is keeping the planet, it's governing the planet so it does not get too close to Earth. It's, it's, it's in a container. It's in a transparent container. And it maintains the same angular apparent size away from Earth because of that. That's the only logical answer to the retrograde motion of the planets, to the orbit of the planets. It doesn't work in a heliocentric model. Obviously, it doesn't work in a flat model. This is the only thing that works, guys. Sorry. So, that's what's going on. Planets are contained in transparent spherical tabernacles, and when they go into retrograde, they maintain the same apparent angular size because they're trapped within that tabernacle, especially during retrograde. So I just busted heliocentrism, heliocentrism <laughs> forever and ever, forever and ever, drown the cesspool of stupidity. So you got all these different, different distances. It's not going to work like that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Sorry, Red's rhetoric and Mariah Ziller. It doesn't work. Kohler logic. It doesn't work. Surrender. Capitulate. The Lord Stephen Christ. 